Hey everybody, and welcome to my N5 series on the SP404 Mark II, where I cover a topic in about five minutes. This is session 73.5, and I want to take a like a little intermission or break to kind of talk about what my thoughts are, or kind of a few lessons learned from trying to make an ambient uh, piece on the SP404 Mark II. A couple of things that came to mind is, I think organization is probably pretty key, and I just was doing things without thinking about it too much, and ended up with a little bit of a mess, but that's okay. Um, but the, the first thing I think is, you know, you're probably going to want some kind of drones or things that will extend for a long period of time, kind of like this. I mean, this is just something that worked. This was also one of the first things that I had to, that I recorded. And if you don't, if you remember, I, I did end up, I think this is one of the ones that had an envelope. I don't know. I, the envelope is okay. Um, I actually like it because it helps smooth out the transitions, but a thing that I didn't realize happened on the SP404 Mark II, and I do now, is when you tap it a second time when it's in loop mode to stop, it takes a little bit longer for it to stop than normal, which is okay, usually, but if that's something that you want to have, then, um, yeah, I would say think about either resampling or doing some other things, uh, Similarly, like this one here, the loop, it's not perfect. There's almost a little bit of a pop in it, but it, you don't hear it as much because I put so much release on this. It's a pretty big release for the size of this loop, but I still, if I stop it, it takes a while for it to actually stop. So I'd say think about, you know, what the behavior of the envelope is in relation to what you're put playing for, whether it's a drone or other sound and how it works. Uh, I'd say also, you know, th these next six here that I recorded don't have any envelope, which is nice and fine, but it uh, has a lot of silence on it, which I think is potentially useful because when it's silent, you know, you can start it and stop it. So you can kind of play it a little bit more as an instrument and you can kind of take, I, I did a lot of these similar sounds so that they'll, and they're all different lengths. So they're going to start kind of stacking and they're going to come in and out of sync with each other, depending on how things are. I would also say you might not want, you may want actually to record silence at the beginning so that you can start all of them at the same time instead of having like this wall of sound. So if I play all these at the same time, you kind of get like this more uh, in your face sound. And it's going to, for a future, uh, loops, they'll probably come in and start separating from each other, but you may not want, you might want to be able to just kind of trigger them and not have them just all be in your face at the same time. I did actually like how these uh, single notes on the bottom came out. So I can play these and kind of create a chord. I mean, I can create a chord and they'll start kind of coming in and out of sync with each other. I actually like how this works. This is probably the thing that I think is the most, one of the most useful things. So and besides that, I would say kind of look at how you can use your effects. I, if I hold shift and pad 16, you can see right now I'm in type B, which allows me to have bus one and bus two separately so that I can then send, you know, I'm sending all these to a reverb, which is turned off. So don't forget to turn on <laughs> in between sessions, but you know, I can kind of trigger all these, have these go through a reverb and then the other sounds because it's parallel with each other. Like these aren't, these are not going through. Oh, that is the wrong bus. Now I'm on reverb. So you gotta make sure you're in the right bus when you start it. Um, that had scatter on it, which maybe is a fun thing to have. I don't know. We can turn it on. But I think there's a lot of performance behavior you can have here, depending on how hard you hit the pads. Well, like if you have a uh, fixed velocity off, you can kind of adjust how loud anything comes in. You can adjust the timing for when it comes in. You have the loop links. There's a lot here to kind of make some expressive sounds and perform it. Anyway, guys, uh, just my thoughts on kind of having done this again. I think it's like the second or this might be the third ambient track I've tried doing for a session. And uh, this one was probably the more fun one, kind of thinking about where to place things in the sound spectrum 
how to use a few more of the features of the SP404 Mark II and kind of seen where it went. Anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. Keep making music. Keep having fun. Remember, if it sounds good, it is good. And peace.